Welcome to Brothers, Sisters, Strangers video podcast. I'm here again with Fern today, and uh, today we're going to have a very, very important theme um, with regards to uh, sibling estrangement discussed in the public sphere. As a matter of fact, uh, Oprah did a recent interview with uh, Prince Harry and, uh, and Meghan, and I know that uh, that's been uh, stirring a lot of waves and such. So um, I think this is something that will touch upon some of our viewers uh, and their own experience. So uh, hopefully we can uh, discuss that a little bit more today. Well, hi, it's always great to be with you, Ali John. I'm Fern Schumer Chapman, the author of the upcoming book, Brothers, Sisters, Strangers, Sibling Estrangement and the Road to Reconciliation. And as we know, we hope that William and Harry will have a road to reconciliation, but right now it doesn't look very good. In the Oprah interview, the prince used a very revealing word to describe his relationship with his only brother, Prince William. He used the word space. He said, I love him to bits. We've been through hell together. We had a shared experience, but we're on different paths. And then he said that he hopes that one day things will change. And he said, you know, time heals all things. Well, Ali John, as you know, I had space from my only brother for decades and ultimately reconciled with him seven years ago. And in my experience, it takes a whole lot more than time to heal an estranged sibling relationship. So one of the things I wanted to mention to you, and I think you can add a lot of insight psychologically, is that in the research for my book, I discovered that there are many risk factors. And sadly, Harry and William fall into almost all the risk factors for sibling estrangement. So what I'd like to do is call your attention to some of them, and maybe you can offer some insight as to why it's so risky to have these particular elements in the family. The first one is family trauma. And of course, the brothers experienced the death of their mother at a very early age. And that's a deeply traumatizing event. So how does that fit into what you, how you understand sibling estrangement? You know, that's a very important point that you're making, Fern. I think that, of course, uh, having the death of a parent is one of the biggest stressors uh, an individual can endure uh, it's right up there in the top three. So uh, definitely this is the type of situation, especially if it happens so quick and unexpectedly, um, that it can create uh, all sorts of uh, different difficulties that can linger on in people's development. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's obvious here that, uh, the, the, that the children were uh, majorly affected by this. And uh, if, of course, uh, the royals uh, weren't able to, of course, uh, discuss this and... Uh, and, and, and try to handle this in a healthy way, what ends up happening, of course, is that the system restructures itself in such a way that, uh, our, that the individual needs may not necessarily always be met. So the mother being the caregiver, the mother being, of course, the largely the emotional world, if you will, of the children, for the most part, uh, they will definitely have uh, some issues uh, that can potentially uh, be associated to attachment and such. Uh, you know, I know that some people, they tend to cling more towards uh, the surviving parents because of that. So it's, it's certainly a, a possibility. And if that parent is not available or is predisposed to be uh, a public figure, for example, where uh, they're, they're just well, quite frankly not available, then those needs can go unmet and that can also cause uh, different uh, types of situations down the road. And also, I think that when children experience trauma, they often not shut down or numb themselves to their own emotional experience. And so that can mean that they bring that to all of their relationships as well. And that means that those relationships can't grow. Absolutely. And that's the thing that happens is that, of course, I, and you've illustrated it wonderfully, is that like the shutting down in that sense, the idea of numbing yourself, the feelings are all of a sudden dangerous. And again, it can affect all sorts of future relationships because the primary parental relationship is altered fundamentally like this. So definitely, I think that that's an important factor to consider 
with regards to what can cause estrangement in other relationships? A second risk factor is parental favoritism. And it seems to me that the entire monarchy is structured on deep favoritism as William will become king and Harry is relegated to a supporting role. And so uh, you can't get much more favoritism than that. You're looking at the golden child illustrated quite nicely, right? I mean, that really is what it is. And of course, does this go to the person's head? There's a likelihood that it can because, of course, the whole system gravitates around you in that way. You're that person that is, uh, as you said, the favorite, and the favorites have ways of expressing that and keeping that into place. Now, of course, there might be some challenges that happen according, you know, with, with siblings and such and demanding, you know, equal treatment and such, but there can never be an equal treatment when there's a golden child that's always being uh, pushed and put on the pedestal like that. And as you said, I think that the monarchy in that way is, is, is a classic illustration of uh, hierarchy uh, manifested and people that are relegated to certain roles. And unfortunately for Harry, he's not on top. And you can understand his resentment and his desire to break away because of that. Absolutely. And, and he's, he's uh, re very right to react to that because, again, if he doesn't react to that, then he's, of course, unfulfilling his own needs in that way they, they, they they're, they're left open and, and in that way that builds resentment that can build all sorts of different frustrations and such with regards to uh, you know his own needs being met the idea of making room for his personality which are things we've mentioned you know in some of our previous podcasts and such so of course that needs to be taken into consideration and it's not surprising to me that he pulled away from that if the game was always to see him as less than Well, and of course, making matters worse is a third risk factor, which is that these young children, if they don't learn communication skills, never know how to negotiate differences. And the monarchy is notorious for its reluctance to discuss difficult personal topics. And as a result, the brothers really never learned how to negotiate their differences. You know, that's the thing, too, because when you're trying to negotiate differences and do conflict management and such, what ends up happening in cases like that is the whole concept of equality. There needs to be an equal ground for everybody. How can people see each other as equals when there's already an implied hierarchy, you know, in some ways? So I, I think that that's the whole issue with regards to that is that the people that are not on top of the hierarchy or in the top tier or whatnot or whatever... What ends up happening with them is that they're relegated to a secondary role. So their needs become less important. So that way you're expected to bend, you're expected to fold, and it's, it's compromising all the time. But we do know that every time we compromise, if it's always the same person that compromises all the time, that builds resentment. Because it's not about trying to find a solution anymore. It's not about trying to find an equal ground where one person tries to answer the other person's needs. It's about you doing basically what's being said of you, and here's what's expected of you. So just that implies the idea of not hearing the other person with regards to that. Right, then you lack authenticity in the relationship. Exactly. So in that way, you're not really talking as much about your own needs because your needs don't matter. So it, eventually what ends up happening is you shut down because even just putting yourself out there becomes a liability because... It's, that's not going to be answered. So why knock on that door if that door is not going to get opened? So people eventually shut down as a protective mechanism because their needs are not being met. So communication ends up, if you will, basically just uh, going haywire. Well, the fourth category, the fourth risk factor that they fall into is family values, judgments, and choices. And Harry, of course, has married far outside the family identity. And I know we are going to discuss this in detail in an upcoming episode, but I wanted to include it here just to call attention to the fact that by marrying somebody who has a completely different identity from what the monarchy uh, has espoused for 2,000 years um, is going to create a great challenge. Absolutely. And that's the issue that happens, I think, a lot with 
with having people on the outside like this. You're, you're having somebody on the outside integrate and join into a system that is much larger than them. So from the get-go, it's already expected that you're supposed to conform to that system. So again, um, I mean, you can see how that system could be very reactionary to the idea that, oh, wait a minute, somebody's joining us, but we don't agree with who they are because they don't have the status necessary or that we deem as being uh, you know, appropriate to what we're looking for. So again, there's an ad adaptation that needs to happen. And clearly based on what uh, we, we've seen also with what she said, is there hasn't been that adaptation. There was never uh, a mentoring person or whatnot. And we'll get more into that, you know, in, in one of the other videos, of course, but obviously these, these issues can, of course, be very difficult and trying for somebody that shows up and is not given a clear path or direction to follow other than do what you're told. You know, it's not surprising that these brothers have teetered on estrangement before. And actually in my research, one of the things I discovered is that there is a lot of this cycling through uh, connection and disconnection in strained relationships. And what's happening is these brothers or brothers and sisters are trying to find some way that they can tolerate either a complete breakdown or find some sort of acceptable level of involvement. So um, I know that the brothers, the royal brothers, were getting along somewhat recently, but they had had an estrangement of sorts earlier. And this is a pretty typical pattern you see uh, in these strained relationships. Now, the other big question that I'd like us to be able to answer, and I know we don't have a lot of time left, but is, is it possible for these two to reconcile? And um, I have my own opinions. Like I said, it's going to take a lot more than time. It has to actually, it requires willful mindfulness and a commitment. And it's not going to happen in one conversation. It's going to take uh, an ongoing dialogue. But um, I'm curious to hear what you have to say as well. Well, I think that reconciliation, uh, you know, I think if you have to give up too much of yourself, uh, then what ends up happening here is that the probable answer to reconciliation is no, <laughs> if you have to do that. Now, uh, worry to work, of course, uh, what would need to happen is that each of each individual's needs would need to be met, of course, you know, and I think that at the same time, uh, power needs to be shared in a democratic way. I think that's very, very important also. So everybody has to have an equal footing in terms of communication and what's expected. And uh, with, with uh, a person's uh, special consideration towards being themselves, I think that's key also that you can feel as if you can be yourself in a system. Uh, and, and that's really, really important if we're talking about reconciliation. And that conflict, of course, is openly discussed as opposed to being swept under the rug, which I suspect may have been the case with uh, the monarchy. And as, as we talked earlier uh, with trauma and such, I mean, again, people can be hypervigilant in some ways. They can be um, very much uh, conscious of, of perceived dangers. Uh, and uh, I'm thinking, of course, of uh, different uh, uh, scenes that the, the, the kids may have played out in their own minds and trying to make a, an attempt at understanding and creating meaning in all of this. Um, that's not easy also for children to experience that uh, in a system that is is based largely on your persona and not so much your individual person. Well, you know, I'm really sorry that William and Harry are going through all this, but I'm somewhat grateful that this is in the public eye because it really heightens awareness of sibling estrangement. And that's something you and I have been trying to do through this podcast. And uh, they've given us an opportunity to discuss in depth their experiences and, of course, apply our own. So I'm glad we have this time. Absolutely. I think this is great that we're able to put this to a real-life situation like this, Fern. So um, I, I hope that our, our viewers will, uh, of course, learn from this and be, uh, of course, more conscious uh, with regards to perhaps their own family system and see how it looks and how... Uh, different roles uh, and different expectations can play into uh, one's uh, individual uh, expression within that family structure with their sibling. So thanks for doing this, Fern. This is great to have you here. Uh, and uh, we'll, of course, discuss uh, 
uh, other topics furthermore in our next uh, sessions, of course. And I know that we really do want to discuss your book. <laughs> and uh, I, I know our viewers must be asking themselves, what's in that book, you know? And they're finally going to get a chance to read that book as it comes out on National Siblings Day. So. Right. And we're going to talk about it. And we would have talked about it today, but this Harry and William estrangement came up and we felt it was important to tackle this at this moment. Absolutely. So I think this is great. I think we've, we, we've covered a lot today. So I really appreciate your time on this. And hopefully we'll, we'll continue, of course, uh, in, in, in future sessions to expand more on all of this in terms of sibling estrangement. So thanks so much for doing this again, Fern, and we'll talk oh, to you soon. Thanks. All right, take care. Bye. Bye-bye.